Living a life of crime, it's like a, it's like a movie that is coming and you're seeing all the good parts. So you'll see all the trailers and you would say, what that movie looking real good, real excitement, real drama. It's looking like a movie you want to see. But after when you sit down and you start to watch the movie, you realize that this movie is real tata and this is not a good movie. My name is Gary Grant. I hail from the wonderful island of Trinidad and Tobago. I live at Shogunas presently, but I was born and grew in Lavantil. And I work at the Ministry of National Security as an outreach manager, and I also pastor a church. I came from a single parent home unit where my mother was the person that brought up me and my brother and my sister. Well, I attended Eastern Boys Government Primary School. I was a fairly bright student on, up until standard five. When I started coming in Shans and I passed for mobile up until junior secondary, I recognized that in order to get respect in school or for people to actually take you on, you had to do negative things, you had to behave bad. Because I saw the guys who were disrespectful to teachers. Those were the guys that had the most friends, and, I talk about, and girlfriends too as well. So I decided, well, probably that is what I need to do in order to get respect. So I started fighting in school, started giving trouble, gambling, smoking weed. I went to Malik Senior Comprehensive, and I was expelled in Form 4 for fighting. Um, I left my parents' home, ran away from home, started being on the streets, and then because I liked to fight, I got into a fight trying to defend my cousin, and the person said that I robbed them. So I ended up at prison in the age of 17 years in the Royal Jail Prison, which was really for adults. I was not an adult as yet, but probably because my size and whatever, they put me in the big prison. And that is where my life of crime really started. So there was an incident in Movalav until with a guy who was a bully in his school. He used to be beating up those guys and younger guys. And I remember a day I was playing a game. And while I was playing the game, he came and snatched it from me. And I was trying to get it back from him, and he pushed me and pushed me and pushed me down. So then after, I realized the only one way to get it back from him, so me and he decided to fight. And actually, I beat him real bad and won the fight. And that is what really changed my course. Because after I won that fight, the kind of attention I was getting. I mean, girls who never talk to me or even look my way, all of a sudden, they want to be friendly. Guys want to be my friend. And then I realized that whatever you did to gain your attention or respect, that is what you'll have to continue to do in order to keep it. Because the way that I felt after I got that kind of attention from the girls, plenty friends, everybody wanted to be my partner, I wanted to keep that. So I just started to just give trouble over and over again until I stopped studying schoolwork. I used to just go to school, to line, to gamble, to smoke weed, to fight, disrespect some teacher. All that was building, building my brand or building or helping to maintain the so-called respect that I got from, from that fight. I think if my father was more involved in my life and I had more positive role models in my life, my life would have taken a different course. But because my father wasn't there, and I think I was probably angry because of that too. But I felt that although my, my, my mom did her best to grow me and my brother up and my sister, there wasn't much love in the home. I never heard my mom say, I love you. No, do not know anything about getting a hug. That type of love in the home, I think that would have made a, a great difference because as, as, as actually I was seeking faith on the outside. When I went into prison at that point in time, I met guys who, were, who I used to idolize because of the, the grandiose type of life they used to live and the kind of respect that they would have on the streets and then they would be calling. So those are persons that I would look up to. And meeting them, it, it, it kind of inspired me to want to be like them even more. One of the guys told me that, small man, I like your vibes, you know, you're real aggressive and thing. When you come out of prison, 
that we connect now. So it's what happened, I came out of prison after about two weeks. And he probably came out of prison after a month. So we connected and then I started to commit robberies with him. Started to rob sales van, then started to rob gas stations, then groceries, then drug blocks. And it just kept escalating and escalating and into more and more um, crime. I would have probably went into prison about nine times. Those nine times, the most amount of time I would have spent within those nine times was about eight months. And then after I came and got a, a case that I had in the high court, I came and got five years. But I used to be in and out, in and out, in and out of prison until I got that five years sentence. And after that five years sentence, came out of prison in 2002, December. And that is where my life really started to to be different on the outside. Other case, a, a robbery case. It had, it had several different counts, and I went to court for that case, and the case went upstairs. When I say went upstairs, it went to the high court, but I got beaten and I came outside. I continued to live that same type of life, but I was no longer going and rob people and them things, but I was sending young people to do it. And I remember that coming to the date where the high court matter was about to call. I started to say, boy, you see me, I need to change my life, you know. So I started to go to church. And well, I actually started to go to church thinking that going to church now I mightn't get any sentence. I might probably get away when I go in front of the, 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 um, the judge, so I was praying and stuff. But it so happened that when I went in front of the judge, she said, uh, you have a good story, you know, but I feel you need to probably take some time to go behind bars and think, and probably will, when they come out of prison, they will continue on the straight and narrow. So she sentenced me to five years. If you understand the prison culture, if you go outside a prison and you never look back at people on the inside, never visit them or try to help them in any way, they will try to stab you up or they will try to get at you somehow. So I went back in prison and I mindset, you see me, I'm going to live in this cell block. I'm going in prison and get on very bad because I know I've got to defend myself. But it so happened that when I went into prison that time, that they placed me close to a cell that where there were actual prison inmates who were preaching the gospel and singing songs every night. And the day after, I went into the exercise yard and they were preaching the gospel in the exercise yard. But I was feeling a strong pull to go, but I didn't want to go because I was studying my reputation. I wouldn't feel I was going to think I lost my belly, I get soft and then I would become a target. So I used to see more distance and watch. I thought that day I was lying down in my cell. And while I was lying down in the bed, I heard a voice say, read Collegians 3.3. 3. And I wondered, well, what is Collegians 3.3? 3? You are dead and your life is now hidden in Christ. And from there, I started to preach, started to pray. I mean, um, prison officers used to come for counseling, to talk to me. I remember that I was, I was walking down the corridors in prison and while I was walking down the corridors, I saw two of my enemies walking towards me. And I became frightened because I said, them fellas go try to stab me up, you know. And then I kept on walking, and when I reached close to them, one of them stretched out the hand to shake my hand, and I wondered, well, why did he stretch out the hand? And he said, Grant, we like how you're going. Keep it up. And that was the end of that beef with me and them. So all of that act as motivation. That that motivation and I really started to turn around my life and that was the catalyst to my change. I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and never looked back. Well, I work under the ministry in a program called Cure Violence. It's a program where we interact with persons who are the highest risk in the communities, which would be gang members. We try to prevent shootings and woundings and also reprisals. So my job as an outreach manager is to supervise the field officers like the violence interrupters, the outreach workers who actually interact with the persons on the ground. My job is to strategize and decide which communities they work in and what type of interventions are needed to bring about the change and transformation within the community. I came out of prison in 2000. Whilst I was in prison, I started an organization with a person named Wayne Chance, who is now deceased. We started a, a, um, a rehabilitation program for ex-prisoners called Vision on Mission. And probably about five years after we started, 
I got a job in the Ministry of Community Development. Because at that time, the persons who were supposed to be doing that in the Ministry of Community Development, they were fearful to go into the community. So they felt that somebody who, who was from the community and who had the background of, of crime and violence, that sort of things, would be better able to interact and wouldn't have the fear. So I got the job. While I was working in the Ministry of National Security, I heard about the work that I was doing. I had a new program that was coming on stream called Citizen Security Program. So someone reached out to me from the ministry and would have been able to have more access to more resources to do more in the community. So I decided that I would leave the Ministry of Community Development and work with Citizen Security Program. And now I am the Community Outreach Manager. Well, actually, the work that I do now is something that I would have done free without any salary because it's something I was doing before I was even contacted by the Ministry of National Security or the Ministry of Community Development. So I was part of the problem, so I have decided to give my life to be part of the solution. So my joy is to see people who would have known to be mischievous, would have been involved in a life of crime, would have lived a delinquent life, to see them change their life and start to to, to tread on a positive path. So that is my fulfillment, to see people really change and so I do things positive and really change their mindset and so they take a different course in life that will not lead them down the path that I went. So that is what gives me joy and fulfillment. Well, I would have known a young guy who was in YTC. He also graduated to the big jail and that is a person that I met in prison, and he continued to live a life of crime. So after he came out of prison, he came and he checked me, but he was expecting that all that was preaching in prison and helping people to rehabilitate their life, he thought that probably I was just using that to cut time in jail. But when he realized that it was for real, he himself started to calm down. But actually, I introduced him to take some courses to do, like, to operate crane and heavy tea, equipment, and those sort of things, and started to mentor him and talk with him and stuff. And now today, he is operating cranes, I think it's um, Paramount Transport, one of those places, and he is, um, he's doing really well. The one thing that I'm struggling right now with, and it had me a, little, a bit anxious recently, is that after you build relationships with persons and then you get a call, this person get gone down. This person was a shot. That, that started to get to me. Seeing them among the young people that you're working with and they're just dying out. And then the next thing too is you don't really have the amount of resources that you need to do what really, what really needs to be done. So you're trying to work with limited resources and you're seeing where with more resources you'll be able to have a better impact. Those are the things that negatively affects me. Well, in the high needs community, there needs to be more activities, more community building activities. Also the infrastructure of the community, it needs, it needs development, it needs changing. There are persons in the community that have very skillful, very talented, but they don't have the avenues to really express, express the the talent or the abilities that they have. So if I had the resources, those are some of the things that I would do within the community. I would try to generate enough youth activities to keep the youth and them engaged, because what I recognize is that in most of these communities where there's a high level of violence and crime, there are not much positive activities happening within the community. I'm talking from my experience. You might be watching these guys and seeing the nice things like the gold, the jewelry, the, the women, the, the cars, the way how people will treat with them in the community. But then you're not watching, you might be watching that part, whatever the negative part. There are persons from the community who would have been persons that you would look up to and then you see police kill them or next gunman kill them. You would see somebody got shot or get chopped. You will see police go and kick down somebody's door and raid the house. You're seeing all the negative things too. But sometimes you focus on the things that you feel positive, the things that could probably make you live a better life or get the, the, the respect that you, so, that you feel.
But you have to look at the, the consequences of living that type of life too, and that is what people don't see. I don't know if they blind eye towards it, but it does be in front of you too as well. You might feel that you might escape those things, but the same thing that you feel that you escape is the same thing that is part of living that life. Those are consequences that come once you live in that type of life. And if you choose, if you make the choice of living a bad boy life or living a, a crime life or living a negative life, there are consequences to it too as well. Yes, you might enjoy yourself because before I get hold the first time, I do a lot of things and didn't get hold. And I felt I was riding high and again true. Every time I go on a robbery, again true, you're escaping clean. You know, and your reputation does growing and you're feeling well. You kind of feel like you're, you're, you're larger than life, you're invincible. And then one day the police could hold you and all the time you escape, you could pay faith. So you might have gone and robbery and spent five minutes or two minutes and get in and get out and then police hold you. You come and get no bail, you end up in prison. You spend about two, three years before you get bail. And then you come and get jail on top of that and you get 10 years with strokes or whatever. So that, that, that time, all the time that you felt you get away and you're and, and you feeling that you're larger than life, that will consequence all of that eventually you'll pay for it. And if you ain't pay for it in this life, you will pay for it in the life to come. Anyhow you take it, you'll pay for it. There are always positive alternatives. Instead of looking at the negative persons within the community, Look at the people who are excelling and doing that which is right, the person who excelling in sport, the person who excelling in their education, the person that excelling in, in community work. Probably could shift your focus to them instead of the persons who are doing the negative things and it seems like they're getting respect, but it's not really respect, it's fear. So it's not that the, the, not that the community respecting them, but it's really fear. There are plenty of different organizations today that they could probably turn to to get the extra support that you need as a young person. And church is a great alternative too as well. well. I think I'm a good listener. I don't, I'm not judgmental. Because of the life that I've lived before, I, I can't really judge nobody. I don't feel I'm better than nobody, so I try to be humble. I try to esteem people even higher than myself at times. I think I still have a problem with anger. Not think I know. Well, that does control it, but it has been side raging, especially when you think about the life that you used to live before, and then somebody might be coming around you and you're saying to yourself, boy, hmm, if he or she only know. So I think I'll work on my anger still. I think I lack some confidence in myself because of my past. So although I would have been elevated and achieved a lot, sometimes I feel that I still feel like a, I'm unworthy. I still feel sometimes some of the positions that I've been placed in that are not supposed to be there. Especially when I'm in a room with persons who are well-educated, persons who come from good family, persons who never lived the past that I lived. Well, I think I'll tell myself to be contented with who you are. Because looking on the outside, and looking at the wrong people and wanting what they have, that would have motivated me to do what I was doing. But sometimes you have to be content with what you have and you have to learn to live slow because when you try to live too fast and you try to get money too fast and you try to get success too fast, most of the time it's the wrong things that you'll have to do. And I remember a person told me one time that anything that grows too fast is prone to disease. So it will be defective. And that is what happened to me. I got money fast got influenced fast, but ended up in prison and lost everything and the things that I had couldn't even help me. So I would tell, I would tell young people to do rush life, take your time. I would tell them to do right for spite and I would also tell them to don't ever give up. Be, be persistent, be diligent, be faithful. Once you have those kind of characteristics, you will make it. The process might be slow, but once you stay on course and you continue to project positive vibes, you continue to see God, you continue to do positive things, eventually, whatever is your purpose or your plan, you will walk right into it.